This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is one of the most respected voices in the resource space, Mr. Jeff Phillips. Jeff, how are you this morning? I'm doing well, Gerardo. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. As uh, our audience knows by now, you and I often chat, and and you know you're you're one of the people in the business that I really trust and lean on for you know company specific takes and and macro takes. You've been in the business for and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe um, nearing three decades now. Is that correct? Yeah, I guess so. Pretty close. <laughs> and, so, and, and usually, I don't like it in three decades. <laughs> Let's just call it 27 years or something. Let's call it 27 yeah. years. Fair enough. And, and, right. and usually when you and I have conversations, it's in regards to the market, but I thought we would change it up a bit today. And I, I really want to have a conversation about how important it is to have a network. And look, the bottom line is I wouldn't be anywhere in this business without the network that I've been able to, to develop over the years. And and it's invaluable to me. Everything from financings to being able to call a geologist if I don't quite get the technical aspect of a news release or a deposit. But the bottom line is you're nothing without a network. And so I really wanted to reach out and just talk with you about your network, how you've developed it, how you approach it, and then we can get into the usual conversation about macro issues, and maybe even you can share a couple of names that you like in the space. Yeah. So you want to, how important a network is? It's it, it's crucial. I mean, again, you know, uh, the resource business is you know full of pitfalls and and lots of ways to lose lots of money. So um, you know, again, it's all about people and and reputations and what people have done before. Um, you know, and and like you said, you know, you. I'm not a geologist, so I have geologists that I work with that I trust that look at things. Uh, you know, if you listen to every company geologist, everything is going great. You really need to have a outside opinion, you know, <laughs> several outside opinions, actually, not just one. Um, when it comes to the geology, you've got to look at the underlying commodity, the country risk, the, you know, and there's different people that are good at all of that. And, and you know, and again, so a network is crucial. And it's also a network, to, you know, I mean, basically, I've been in the business, like you said, for 27 years. I actually was active in the business, you know, doing consulting and, and raising money. And I'm more, uh, you know, running my own, uh, my, my own money now and just investing. And, but, but I know all the players from over the years and different people. So, you know, you're always looking for, I, you know, uh, the private placements that I think are interesting and, or, you know, when you have market sell-offs like we have for, you know, 2011 to 2016, 17 was really the bottom there, but you know, you've had lots of opportunities to buy things that are undervalued for the money that went into those projects. And in the next cycle, a lot of these pro or some of these projects will be bought out. So again, it's having a network to be able to identify even in the downtimes what the undervalued assets are to buy in the market when companies aren't raising money. You mentioned private placements. I'd love to start there. Okay, for, for those that aren't familiar, um, can you go over how a private placement um, and the many perks that, that, that it comes with can be very, very effective at multiplying your, your wealth, right? It's great, for example, to buy into a stock and watch that stock go up and, 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 and you book your profit or your gain on it. But the, the leverage of a warrant is, is oftentimes the difference between you know, a triple-digit return and a four-digit return. Can you explain to our audience um, how you go about uh, participating in these private placements and, and, and how effective they can be if, if utilized correctly. Well, again, private placements are, you know, I, I guess, you know, everybody knows what an IPO is where you buy stock and, and, you know, you hope that the, you're buying it cheaper than where it's going to open. And, you know, and, and obviously there's been nine private rounds before that at cheaper prices <laughs> for all the angel investors. So it's a little different in the micro cap world. And, and it's for the same for all stocks in the micro cap world, but, I'm predominantly involved with natural resource stocks, but, you know, these are extremely high risk, you know, extremely small companies looking for either looking to develop a, a known deposit uh, and improve it through feasibility studies, uh, pre and bankable, or, or they're looking to discover something and have some smoke or some ideas why there might be a big deposit there. So you're basically investing very early on. And it's always been the case that with, you know, and even outside the resource sector, you know, these companies constantly need to raise capital. They're not making money and will stick with the resource stocks because they're spending it drilling and they're hoping to discover something that's worthwhile selling to someone else. And that's usually why the resource investors investing in these small stocks. So what they often offer is some sort of warrant coverage. So if, 
for sake of argument, if the stock's trading in the dollar, they may announce the financing. Uh, they need to raise more money to do more drilling, or, or and and you know, hopefully the money again. A lot of these companies spend more money on marketing their shares than they do on actually doing work <laughs> on the property. So you first want to find companies that are actually trying to add shareholder value, not just uh, you know use the money to get their share price up so insiders can sell. Um, so, but once you identify a company that's really trying to build an asset, um, you know you have the opportunity to finance that company. Often below where it might be trading at the time, say it was at a dollar, they may announce the financing at ninety cents. Um, you know, to raise $5 million. So, you know, five and a half million shares or something like that. And it comes with a half warrant at a dollar forty. that's good for three years. What that means is you're buying a share that, you know, and you have, and for all these private placements, you need to be an accredited investor, which there's certain criteria for that. Um, and, you know, no one checks that. You check a bunch of boxes off and say you are when you participate in a <laughs> private placement. But, but anyway, you know, so the simple fact is, in my example, you buy the stock at 90 cents, it's at a dollar. You know, there's a four month hold period uh, on that, which is a whole nother subject, depending on what brokerage firm you've used in the U.S. It could be longer. Sure. But for the fact that you're buying those shares and having to hold them and and, you know, and the stock's probably not extremely liquid, uh, doesn't mean you couldn't sell the shares in, in over a few days. But when it is free trading, but you also get this half warrant. Well, that half warrant, in my example, that's at a dollar 40, I think I said, for three years means that any time over the next three years, uh, you know, for, you know, you can combine for every whole warrant that you own, two half warrants together as a whole warrant, you can buy another share of stock at that price. Um, you know, so you can exercise that right. So if something goes very well or the markets like we're heading into here is a bull market and that stock's trading at 250 a year from now, not only have you made money on the stock you bought, the 90 cent stock, you also have your half warrant at a dollar forty, which you can exercise and get more shares, and you're already in the money. So a lot of professional players in the resource business and brokers that are encouraging that have clients are trying to get people in private placements. A lot of these people are following the model that if we can sell the stock for what we paid for it or higher, and then after four months, we have these free warrants that we can exercise. So they're not free. You have to actually pay for them. But you can sit there and wait and see if the company develops and how it does over the next three years. And quite, you know, often those are well in the money and you can make a lot of money on those also. And and, and just to be clear, I mean, you're somebody who's done incredibly well. Um, this is a strategy that, that you employ, the, the using private placements and, 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 and warrants. And obviously with, with your net worth and your influence, you're able to somewhat dictate the terms, but you continue to do it. So this is something that for you over many, many years has worked in, in, in the kind of market that, that we think we're in and, and, and coming into a, a gold bull market. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's even more important into a, a bull market because, you know, during the downturns, there's lots of good values and, and some great companies have good treasuries and aren't raising money. And I, I'll, I'll step in and start buying lots of stock in the market if I like, um, you know, the asset and like the company and know they don't have to raise money. But, you know, and as you get into more of a bull market like we're, we've started into now, you know, it's more important. I like to do private placements because a lot of the stuff's gotten more valued uh, as moved up from the, the bottoms. And I want, since I'm taking the risk, I want to have some warrant coverage. Absolutely. Where can people that fit the criteria that are accredited investors that maybe don't have the network or the access that you have, where can people access these types of deals? Well, predominantly, you know, it's with a, you know, if we're speaking specifically about the natural resource sector, it's with a natural resource. The, the main, the main source from these, unless you're in the business is you know, a lot of the brokerage firms, especially in Canada and some here in the United States are, you know, raising money for these companies and looking for what they believe is good deals. And their brokers offer those to their clients to participate in a private placement if they're accredited individuals, because that's what they do. And they get a commission, the brokerage firm. But, you know, brokerage firms have become less important in the last 10 years. And you're seeing a lot of private groups such as myself. I, you know, I, I look for companies and people come to me and say, Jeff, we need to raise $4 million. Well, I'm not raising all that money, but I may be putting $500,000 into that financing myself, but I may go out and reach out to guys I know that are good shareholders and can help companies and we're longer-term shareholders and don't want to have a bunch of short-term shareholders that are just collecting warrants. We'd like to have a big win. That's what I go after. 
um, you know, I can help them raise that money. And, and, you know, all of these private placements from a company standpoint, you're just renting the money. So you want the best money that can help you develop your company or support you in the future, not be sellers right away to collect warrants. So people come to me because they know I tend to be a longer term shareholder. Um, and so, you know, that's how I, you know, I know a lot of people in the business. So that's why I get opportunities to look at my own private placements and, you know, but like I said, you can do it through brokers. And then, you know, there's so many deals out there. There's, you know, you know, I don't know every deal that's going on. And, you know, I'm a, I have brokerage accounts. They send me this private placement, but I pretty much only do my own. The only other private placements I've done are through your, your colleague that you work with, Nick Hodge, who uh, runs a private placement newsletter, not just resources, but, you know, micro cap, um, uh, you know, private placements. And Nick often gets offered deals because of his connections and his network. Um, and, you know, I've participated, you know, anyway, and, and, and done very, very well with Nick Hodge. As have I, and obviously I'm biased, right? Uh, we're friends, we're colleagues, but uh, I'll put my bias head on, as I always say, because <laughs> I, I wouldn't be talking my book if I wasn't biased. But the bottom line is I've done extremely well with with the access that Nick's provided multiple times. And I, hand, I, I believe hands down he has the best private placement service out in, in, in the business right now. And again, I'm biased, but the numbers support my thesis. And I think, you know, this isn't a track record that he has for, for months or for, for a year or two. He's been doing this for, for quite a bit now. 